Hey guys, Ryan with Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana with Jordan Card Collecting, episode number three. We've got our good friend of the show, Zach. You guys have been living vicariously through him as he's just started his Jordan Card Collecting journey. Zach, welcome to the show. It's uh, December 29th. What's up? Nothing, man. I'm actually in the great state of Louisiana. You are, but you're you're not now. You're in a hotel bathroom, but you're not locked in a hotel bathroom. No, I'm not locked. I'm just as far it. as you know. Right, as far right. as I know, I'm, I'm yeah. not locked in. Is it okay? So I guess the first thing that the viewers are going to want to know is: is it your hotel room? No, it's a friend's. <laughs> I just didn't want to do it at my house. You've been captured. There and stuff. So who who loves Jordan so much? They're with their friends. They're at a casino. Fair. <laughs> You're at a casino. Yeah. And you're yeah. coming on my show randomly on a Thursday at 6.01 p.m. to talk about Jordan cars. That's the fever, baby. That's what it's all about. And that's why uh, everybody who's watching this show is probably going to identify with the feeling that you have. You can't wait to talk about some of the cards you picked up and just talk about some of the stuff you're learning from collecting Jordan. So uh, let's not waste any time. Um, you know, last week we showed some of the new cards you picked up and we, we talked in great detail about sort of uh, the guidelines and the framework, not hard and fast rules, but sort of the framework. Um, it, why don't you kind of just real quick refresh uh, our memory and really for the viewers who maybe missed episode two, if you did, please push pause and go watch episode two. This is going to make a lot more sense. But for those who didn't see episode one or two, um, just kind of refresh our memory about how you decided to kind of narrow the focus of what Jordan cards you want to collect. Just talk us through that a little bit. So we agreed to go Jim Mint. I'm going to go Gem Mint, BGS 9.5, um, just because of the amount that I can get instead of collecting PSA 10, right? Um, all the Beckett slabs have to have subgrades. I said I'm not going to get one without the subgrades because I don't like the way it looks, whatever. Yep. Um, inserts and parallels only. That's loose, right? We said if I find a base card that for the right price, I'll probably just go ahead and snag it. Uh, which I haven't yet, surprisingly, but um, only Bulls jerseys, no Wizards cards, um, no coding or peel, no autographs, no game worn. Um, and then we discuss I'm going to start slow and then start yeah. moving to larger buys periodically. Yeah, it's, so. it's a great synopsis right there. Like you nailed it. That's everything. It's almost like you have it written down somewhere near there but uh yeah that's it and, and i told you like i like it i like everything about what you decided to do there and, and look we got a lot of great comments last week about how people like the focus uh at the way that you decided to focus your collection the kind of the decisions you had to make about grades and types of cards and things like that so uh the overwhelming majority of the comments were uh were super positive and i think people are enjoying kind of watching you learn by doing. I mean, that's really what this is, is learn by doing, right? I'm just kind of here to be a sounding board. I'm not telling you what to buy, but no, it, just, just to make it clear, I've not told you to buy a card yet, right? Um, no. you, you caught me this morning in a seminar and you're like, dude, what's going on? It was a card that I just recently bought in PSA 10. Yeah. And um, remind me, what was it? The Electrified. Electrified. Yeah. The Electrified. 91, 93. What year was I it? Know. I can't remember. The Electrified. I bought it in PSA 10. I think I paid 588. And you were looking at one that was a BGS 9.5, which is your wheelhouse. And there hadn't been a comp in like forever. But somebody picked it up for like 120 bucks or something silly like that. Stupid. And so, so we have the 588 that I paid, which I got a good deal because it was two rungs lower than yeah. the comp before. It got way up there. So I thought I got a good deal at 588. And you were trying to figure out what to offer on an electrified that was available on uh on ebay um god i gotta remember what year that card 350 is 350 buy it now yeah it was 350 buy it now and you wanted to know what to offer and we had to kind of just do some guesstimating to get there right um you don't remember the year was it 1993 ultra two i feel like it was card number 278 is that wrong that's wrong i don't know 271 oh, we're gonna find it we're gonna find it that's not it. Um, maybe it's 1994 Ultra. Jordan, I'm trying to find it for us. Uh, okay, we'll, we'll keep talking. We'll figure it out. Um, anyway, so you picked up three cards since we spoke last week. Talk to me about the cards that you picked up. Let's go uh, one at a time. I'll try to pull them up in Card Ladder if they're in here. If not, we'll pull it up in the sales history and we'll kind of chat through it. But 
Um, talk to me about some of the cards that, that you picked up or, or if there's some close calls where you were trying and you didn't quite get there and just yeah. uh, kind of give us a framework. What's up? So two of the cards that I picked up are the same card, same grade. One is a true gym and one is a minimum gym, but it's a uh, Nike promo Jordan card. It's a, it's called the Scream Team and it's, I think it's loosely based off Space Jam, but because it has Bugs Bunny on the car, but it doesn't have the Monstars. It has like these birds surrounding it. It's weird. Uh, do you remember the card number? I hope my screen doesn't go black. Never mind. I got it. I got it. Oh. So your screen went black, but I got it. Uh, so this, did you pick them both up from the PWCC vault? Yeah. So I made two off. Well, actually, I made an offer on the True Gym probably two weeks ago. Okay. Uh, I offered like 250. Didn't hear anything. Didn't respond for 48 hours. And then I was keep going th back through it uh, two days ago, and um, I saw both of them. And I sent the minimum gym in for 150, and the true gym for 200. And he accepted both. Yeah. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if it was the same seller. There's no way to tell when you're buying on the PWCC fixed price marketplace. You don't know. But uh, but those are Zach's cards. So these are both Zach's cards. Here's the Min Gym you picked up for 150, and uh, and here's the one you picked up for 9.5. If we look at some other ones, uh, the PSA 9 went for a paltry uh, 33. It looks like there. But I told you when you sent it to me, you're like, check this out. I was like, dude, I've never seen that card. Like I've never seen this card. Like that's really cool. Uh, and yeah, it does it does look like it's loosely based on it. And the reason I say that is like these green dudes that are around there don't look like the the monsters from Space Jam and um, they're wearing Harachis it looks like but it's got a Jordan symbol but they um, yeah I don't I don't really get it they look almost like Dr Seuss characters with these little things coming out of the top of their head you know what I'm saying <laughs> I don't know what this is it's pretty cool though because it's Nike branded right yeah and there's Pop Seventeen right I don't, yeah, I don't have it in front of me but. I'll take your word for it. I know you did the research. That's one thing you know how to do is research and look up <laughs> pop reports. So you go to Beckett. Beckett's a little more difficult to navigate pop reports. Have you yeah. figured that out? You've noticed that. Yeah. yeah. Um, just a little bit tougher to track down, especially kind of off the radar cards like this. That's a cool card. Uh, the 1993 Nike Warner brother, uh, Warner Brothers, uh, Jordan number 10, the screen team, Michael Jordan with bugs. It must be from a commercial or whatever, because uh, was like they didn't do Space Jam in 93. That was later. Like that was during his, yeah, it was later. Yeah, that was definitely later. So, um, anyway, okay, cool. That's card pickup number one off the radar, a little off the beaten path, but a, a card that any Jordan collector would love. And BGS 9.5 is pot 17. You got two of them. So, uh, that's about one eighth of the cards in the world. So, that's pretty good. It's about 12 and a half percent of the population you've got. It's pretty, <laughs> you're pretty impressive. What else? What else did you pick up? And then, literally earlier today, I closed on the, uh, the electrifying Jordan. You don't have that in front of you. See if you can pull it up in your phone. See if you can pull it up in your phone or something like that. Because we got to look that one up. It's in here, but when I search electrified, it doesn't come up. Oh, it does come up. My bad, Zach. I didn't think it because it's it's theoretically a um, a subset card. So I thought maybe the card ladder wouldn't have it called electrified, but card ladder's got it in parentheses. So there's the card. Uh, Zach, of course, picked it up in BGS 9.5, and this is what we were trying to figure out. Here's the last sale, right? And so. Um, you know, Zach was working with the last PSA 10 sale, which was actually mine. And then this last um, BGS 9.5 sale, which was 120 bucks just about a month and a half ago. And the, the difference between them was like 4X, it really five, almost 5X, right? Right. And so here's my PSA 10 purchase right here. Let me go down to two weeks here. So there's, no, let's go down to one month. There you go. So here's my 588 purchase, which I thought I did pretty well, because if you look at like the last three months, you know, it was like 800, 700, 843, 700. And then I dipped down here to 588. So I think I'm sitting pretty. And then you pull up a BGS 9.5 comp and you texted me while I was in that seminar uh, today with a bunch of attorneys. And of course, I wasn't paying attention. I was actually on eBay buying Jordan cards and uh, nobody would find that surprising. And you're like, man, this is a pop 37. And the last one says 120. And I was like, God dang, that seems low. So I, I think five to one is kind of a big margin, Zach. Uh, yeah. What'd you end up offering on that? So I, I ended up finding the seller 
from eBay on Instagram. And I sent oh. him to you. I made sure. I said, is this guy vetted? That's why I asked. And uh, we closed through Instagram for 235 straight. It's pretty good. I felt okay. good about it just because it, I mean, it doesn't sell that often, right? And like you said, just how, when's the next time you're going to see it again? And how much? There's been two added to the population in the last 20 months. Yeah. So you're not going to see that card a lot. It's a pop 37. We talked through that because I know that's important. Um, and this is a brand new feature on card ladder. Now, when you hit pop report, it pulls up the pop in all grades and all look, it's even got SGC and CSG in here. So this is a brand new feature on card ladder. It's really, really cool. I messaged my friends at card ladder today and told them that's a game changer. That's like really helpful for what I do, especially and how I collect. So I'm sure you'll find that super helpful as well. Um, yeah, so that's awesome. So you worked out on Instagram. So no, no fees for him, no taxes for him, no fees for you, and yeah. uh, private deal. You shipping it straight to your PWCC fault? Yeah, and easy. I'm not touching it. Yeah. Yeah, easy, easy, easy. Okay, that's a good pickup. I like that, man. It looks really good with that gold Beckett label. Like that's a really yeah. good looking card. It's yeah. just a really good looking card. We talked about some of the cards with Lightning, Scoring Kings, Electrifying, um, Electrified. And I always forget. There's another one that I'm forgetting right now that I just did. I always have four, but I think there's like five, six, seven, eight of them. There's a bunch of different Jordan cards with uh, with lightning in the background. But this one's prominent and it's green. So really cool. Yeah. Uh, so that's card number two. So that's a nice pickup right there for sure. What else? Talk to me. So I was close to pulling the trigger on a slick silver. OK. Um, the guy had it listed really low and I was trying to figure out why. And then he had pictures like that. It's impossible. But, yeah. <laughs> but you could barely tell that there was some yellowing. And I think that's why he had the price so low and the pictures were like that. I think he was trying to get somebody to buy it and then realized it was yellow later. So I just stayed away. But those are they're, they're pretty hard to find, actually, in like a 9.5. They are. And it's miserable trying to find one with a good picture. But you know what? I'm determined that we're going to do it. So I'm going to go into sales history. And I'm going to, I'm going to, there it is right there. Now, finally, finally, a brilliant picture. So, and you can even see a hint of yellowing on this one too, but look how much different that card looks. Uh, that's just a beautiful card with the ghost Jordans trailing behind him like that. Jordan's about to execute a step back, but even this beautiful, you know, BGS 9.5, look how much worse the picture is. It just looks right. so much worse. Um, the difference between those two is just crazy. And so here's a good looking 9.5 copy as well. Um, so talk to me again. Tell me about the numbers. Here's a not this 9.5 sold. Wait, that sold two days ago for 510. Yeah, I was looking at it. I was thinking about doing it, but I was in disagreeing with myself because the guy had it for buy it now at like, well, he, he offered me like I think 260 for it, which okay. is half of what that one was. Right. So I was like, there has to be something wrong. <laughs> Because I did last comp and I was trying to like not lowball him, but you know get it fairly low for it, and um, he responded just way too low than I expected. And uh, it, I, I think it's miserable. because it was yellow. And, yeah, it's miserable to try to find out whether like look at this guy. This guy calls it atomic gold in his description. Like <laughs> what? And it says nine point two. What is that? What is this? Atomic Gold is the name of the grading company. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. What are we looking at, Zach? <laughs> Somebody come in here and translate this. I don't know. Nine. What the hell is that? Um, the biggest skating score. All right. So you did not take down the slick silver. No, I did. I didn't do it. I didn't pull the trigger on it. Look, unless you have one of those crazy pictures, it's really, really clear. You just you gotta see that card with a sheet of white paper behind it. It's like the titanium. Those are a couple of those cards where you just gotta see it with the white paper to really see what it. Uh, whether it's got any yellowing to it or not. So uh, yeah. tough card for sure. Um, yeah. All right. What else? So you picked up a third though. Well, no, that picked up those two that were the same. And oh, that's the, right. So duplicate yeah. copies and the duplicate copies was just a timing error or, right. or whatever. Yeah. And that's why you tried to pawn one of them off on me and say, Hey, do you want this card? Is that true? Is that <laughs> well, I knew you'd like it. You know, you love the Nike Jordan collab. Yeah. Legendary, yeah. You know, um, and then I sent you a picture because I have a couple. What did I have in a 9.5 of uh, the um, legacies of the legacies in a 9.5? We'll pull that up real quick. So this is a card that I messaged you right back about. I just happened to notice I have two copies of this card 
uh, which is just a beautiful card, really underappreciated card, under a thousand bucks in BGS 9.5. I have two copies of this card in my PWCC vault, and I just happened to notice that, and I reached out to you. So we may be able to get a deal done for that, or maybe a trade or something like that in the yeah. future. But the Legacy is a beautiful card. It's actually uh, trending upward one, two, three times in the last three months. The 9.5 has sold for more than the sale before, uh, up 36 percent. Uh, over the last three months. I wonder if the PSA 10 is moving in. A, no, PSA 10 is going the other direction, Zach, down 31%. So that's not the last time we'll see some weird incongruity with uh, with Jordan graphs and charts. It's just, yeah, it's, just it's, a it's a it's a big difference. I've known, I've noticed this. Uh, I'm one of the people who collects Jordan B, BGS or PSA, but there's a lot of people out there, Zach, who are doing what you're doing. And, and they may be only PSA or they may be only Beckett. And uh, just having that allegiance to one company or another will lead to some weird anomalies uh, in these price charts. Like you would think if two similar pop cards in Gem Mint, BGS and PSA, they may not be the same price, but you'd think they would at least somewhat follow similar trajectories. It's the same damn card and they're both Gem Mint, but it's not the case. It's really weird. Right. Um, but um, but what else is going on? What what uh, who's in there with that bathroom? Is there someone else in that bathroom with you? I thought I heard somebody. No, okay. No, nobody in the bathroom. I'm just making sure. Uh, you're not in. The, I should have asked this first. You're not on the toilet. No, I'm not. I'm sitting in a okay. chair from the desk. All right. Well, well <laughs> we'll never know. We'll take your word for it. But um, is there a phone in the bathroom? No, there's not. You ever I go to those? Watch. I know, but you ever go to those bathrooms where they have a phone on the wall and you're like, what? What are they thinking? Why? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Like if you go to yeah. really ritzy, like you're in a pretty decent hotel room. If you go to like the Four Seasons and stuff like that, there's a phone on the wall right next to the toilet. Like who, you who's your phone a friend? Like if something terrible happens while you're on the toilet, like who is that friend that you could call from the toilet with the phone, with the cord on it in the hotel yeah. bathroom? I don't know. I don't know who I would call. I can't even think of, I, I wouldn't call you. I don't know who I'd call. Um, what else? What else is happening? Um, so I, the reason I've slowed down is because I'm not a fan of buying on eBay, even though like it's kind of an unlimited, you know, resource. Yeah. I just don't like doing it. And my PWCC is too convenient. I like the auctions on there. You know, I only have to worry about it really one day of the week. Yeah. You know, it's just way, way easier. Yeah, but, I'm with you. Uh, I noticed this because I, I kind of just – flip through um, some of the PWCC weekly auction. I guess it's number 50 that ends this Sunday, right? Yeah. Like and that. I, I was, you know, scrolling through there. Uh, it seemed to me a lot fewer, and I was only searching PSA 10, 9.5, and PSA 8 Jordans, but it seemed like fewer than normal. And I'm guessing maybe that's consigners thinking we're in the holidays. We just had Christmas. Everybody spent their ass off on their kids and family or girlfriends or wives or whatever. Right. And then, or husbands. And then now we got New Year's Eve. I mean, it's going to end on New Year's Day. Um, I've got cards in that weekly auction number 50 that I didn't think too much about it. And I think it cuts both ways. So it's New Year's Day and a lot of people are going to be watching football. Uh, and a lot of people are, um, you know, it's a holiday. And so they'll be doing other stuff, even if they're not watching football or they may be hung over from the night before. But it's also every everybody's like sitting around, like for the most yeah. part. And so, um, I don't know. I just feel like the hobby never sleeps and, and, you know, just like selling on Christmas day, uh, I think selling on new year's day is really not the end of the world. And I don't think there's gonna be that big a difference on prices. December, generally speaking, is not a great month to sell stuff, but for some reason I decided to, uh, just cause it was time and I've been putting it off so long. So yeah, uh, I'm in a consolidation mode so I can buy more Jordans like you. Um, I probably should have pulled up some Jordans that I bought because I bought some um, some Jordans today. Actually, I can't pull them up because I just while I was sitting in that seminar, <laughs> I wasn't lying. Like I'm not just BSing y'all. I was literally buying Jordans. So I'll show you. So so Zach, I collect. Uh, you know, I've got my high end collection, which is PSA 10s and BGS 9.5s, but I've started that PSA 8 parallel collection where I'm kind of collecting on a low, uh, collecting on a budget, basically Jordan stuff. Right. And so I picked up the 1989 Fleer. PSA 8 Jordan. Let's pull it up. Nope. Sorry. I got the wrong year. It's 88. I, I decided to go ahead and take both of these down. Uh, I what happened? I took down the base uh, Jordan and PSA 8, which was a super affordable and I got it for a great price. I got it for 120 bucks and it's pop a zillion, right? We know that's not a low pop card, 
but I just didn't feel like that collection, uh, the PSA collection would be complete without it. So I picked up a really clean looking copy on a relatively new label of the PSA 8 base. And this is kind of what it looks like over the last uh, year here. Let's get this thing. I'm not sharing my screen. I'm so bad at that. I'm so sorry. Uh, there it is. 1988 Fleer PSA 8. So I picked one of these up for 120 bucks. Card's actually gone up a couple times over the last uh, two weeks. It's kind of run a little bit. So I think this was my purchase right there. 120, which I was fine with, you know, again, pop a zillion. Uh, but then I also picked up the All-Star uh, in PSA 8. Same deal. And so I picked up uh, this for 115, I think. Uh, or maybe, well, that's weird. Mine, oh, it hadn't registered because I bought it today. So that must be what it was. So I picked it up for 115, which I thought was a pretty good price. And so I uh, knocked both of those off my list. I wanted to go ahead and snag the sticker as well. The sticker's a little pricier, so I wanted to spend a little bit more time looking at that. And, uh, you know, sticker's about 3X what those other two were. Um, but I will end up picking that one, and then I'll be done with 88. Isn't it funny how, you know, Doncic has like, you know, 7,000 cards from 2018, yeah. but Jordan has three from 1988 Fleer. Three. And, yes, yeah. they printed – 13,000 million zillion of them, but still there's three to choose from, you know, right. and none of them are really all that expensive. So I think that stickers are really good looking. I like that. That's a good yeah. looking card. I like the colors. They pop. So is this a card you'd look at? I mean, it's an insert. Yeah. Yeah. I'd look at it. I mean, we said no, uh, no eighties. Oh, you said no eighties. You said yeah, no eighties. Well, no, I've got good news for you. You're not going to get it anyway. It's a pop four. <laughs> <laughs> Golly, and there's no subs on that one. So really, there's only three for you <laughs> at the most, <laughs> at the most, right? And Car Ladder estimates it's about a $20,000 card. So you may want to put that one on the back burner. Uh, what about the PSA? Damn, that PSA 10 is a $27,000 card. Holy crap. There's only 12 of them, Zach. Dang. Damn, there's not that That's many of these. I thought there was a, a lot more of these. This is definitely more rare than the uh, than the base for sure. Look at that. There's only 242 nines. Jeez, um, huh? No wonder the PSA eight's 380 bucks, 370 bucks. That's crazy. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. 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 Um, all right. So tell me, tell me some stuff. Uh, we, you know, you wanted to talk last week, but we kind of ran short on time. Tell me about some of the stuff you've learned and some of the stuff you've kind of picked up on. Just over, what is this, maybe 20 days, 21 days, something like that, uh, of getting yeah. in and getting your hands dirty? Talk to us. So when I was talking to Cajun Jr., um, yeah. and he was talking about starting a little collection, and I told him, I was like, man, your, your dad just convinced me to go straight into Jordan. And he was like, yeah, you know, I want to, but the Jordan shit is so expensive. And I literally have an asterisk by this bullet point. It's, there are affordable ways to collect Michael Jordan. And I think... I'm proof of that, right? I mean, I'm put to be, put together a pretty good amount of cards with very limited funds, you know, in a genuine yeah. condition. Yeah. Right? So, and you, your PSA 8 collection is pennies to the dollar what the PSA 10 is, right? So it's there is a way to do it, especially if you just want to collect, not necessarily yeah. invest. Um, so I know this might be just a me and you thing. A lot of people just like to buy to buy. But I've found being efficient in my buys makes me feel so much better about the buy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not just clicking away, yeah. like actually doing the research, taking the time to negotiate, or you know, putting in the research to put in a bid. It just feels better. I don't, you know, it's not like clicking away, buying whatever. You know what you're getting into. You know, you know exactly where you want it to go. Right. Well, Zach, you know, you're, it cuts both ways. So you're brand new and it's, it, it's an overwhelming feeling and a daunting task because there's literally a thousand cards that you would like to pick up at some point. Right. So that's overwhelming. But the benefit of having a thousand cards that you want to pick up is if you don't like the price on card number 997, move on to card number 998. Just move on down the road and wait and maybe a, a better price, 997 you know, card will come to fruition. The slick silver. There's no reason to reach on a slick silver. It's right. not the rarest card in the world. You do not have to buy a slick silver at a price you're not comfortable with. You don't have to do it. It'll be there next week. And what's the worst case scenario? It goes up 25 bucks over the next year. Oh, well, big deal. You know what I mean? Right. Um, go look for the bargains. You've got that option. That's, that's kind of the beauty of having so many different cards you still need to get. 
is that, you know, you're not choosing between three, you're choosing between like 703, you know, right. You right. can, you can basically, you know, eat what you want. You know, it's a yeah. buffet out there for you. It's really, that's a, it's a good way to look at it and a good way to start for sure. What else? The, so I figured this was the best way to actually win Jordan cards is, is auctions, right? I, I think it's way easier and less stressful than the, doing the buy it now stuff. Uh, I found that like, just like everybody else, I know I would do the same thing if I had a bunch of cards listed, they just have them overpriced and they don't want to take the comps into consideration, right? They, they, they want don't to really want to sell. They're listed, yeah. but they're not real. It's like putting my house up for $2 million. Right. Hey, if you want to give me $2 million, I'll take it, but I don't really want to sell it for what it's worth. Right. Yeah. Right. So it, it's, it's a struggle doing that and trying to find the right price. Whereas if you just auction, you're, you're probably going to get it if you yeah. put in the right bid, you know? Um, and I know there's a bunch of snipers, but that's a whole different, <laughs> different thing. Let them snipe. You, you, yeah. you bid what you think it's worth. And once it goes past that, you let it ride and move on to the next one, baby. Yeah. You move on to the next one. Have you, Zach, in your research and in, in getting your hands dirty on eBay, and I know you like PWCC because it's just cleaner uh, and it's instantaneous, you know, no shipping and no waiting. Um, you know, on eBay, getting your hands dirty, have you noticed that there's a lot more available by now than there are auction? Yeah. A lot. A lot. Yeah. Especially if you're looking for high end stuff, you just don't see it at auction very much anymore. No. It didn't, Zach, it didn't used to be that way. When the market was running, uh, running super hot and you were looking for Jordans, you find big Jordan cards auctioned on eBay all the time. It has really, really changed over the past, I'd say, 18 to 24 months to where if you find big Jordan cards on eBay, they're probably buy it now or best offer or maybe just buy it now with no offers. Uh, they're rarely auctions. And it used to be you could find them at auction, you know, and then people would fight over them when the market was running. But right now, I think people started getting uh, sellers started getting mixed results or unsatisfactory results. Yeah. And the only way to control what your card sells for is for you to ultimately decide what the card sells for and not leave it at auction. So, um, you know, it's interesting when you do find that rare, you know, beautiful BGS 9.5 that you're looking for at auction. It's a good feeling because at least, you know, you probably end up somewhere around comps. But damn, or maybe less than comps in the market that we're dealing with right now. You know, right, right. Who's going to take a lesser comp, you know? Some All some right. people are. We know they are because we're, we we just looked at it. They're coming down. There are people out there, right? Uh, and it might be incremental. It might be just chipping away, you know, a little bit lower each time. But I mean, hell, if we pull up graphs at random, I'll just pull one up right here. Uh, let's pull up the PSA nine for eighty eight Fleer. It's down nine percent chipping away just little tiny chips you know depending on the yeah. you know not all PSA nines are the same so some are up some are down or whatever but down nine percent from where it was uh you know three months ago it's it's coming down so we know somebody's taking less than comps otherwise this number right here would be green always and it's not they're mostly red right now which is great for you you know it's yeah. great it is a great time for you to get into Jordan stuff um you know we don't know if it's the bottom but we know it's not the top and right. so at least you got, you know, half of what you want to know, you know, uh, we all wish we knew where the bottom was. And we, if we knew where the bottom was, we'd all just wait and buy at the bottom, but we don't know where it is. So you may have to, you know, buy on the way down. That's okay. Should I, uh, so I meant to ask you this because it's, it's not eating at me, but I know what I could do if I sold the PSA tens. Yeah. Should I just go ahead and let them go. I mean, it depends on how OCD you are. Uh, like for me, here, here is the parallel or the analogy it, for me is if I had, you know, three SGC tens, like I, I would not be okay with SGC ten is a super quality card, the equivalent of a PSA ten and a BGS nine point five. But I am nuts OCD about that. I can't stand that. I have to have it my way. That would eat at me, and I would sell it. I don't know how you are with that. You may be more tolerant than me. When I scroll through my vault, when I see a, a SGC or a CSG, I ship it to myself. I crack it and I resubmit it to BGS or a PSA. That's me because I'm weird and I can't stand the look of anything. Um, you know, and, and people are probably screaming at their screen. Yeah, but you've got BGS, PSA. Those aren't the same either. Why doesn't that bother you? And the reason that doesn't bother me is it's just the way that I started because I knew if I collected PSA only, there would be some cards I'd never be able to get in PSA 10 because there's just not enough. 
So that's why I expanded. You know, I made the same decision you did. I, I thought about going PSA only all the way. And then I was like, well, shit, if I do that, there's going to be PSA 10s I'll never have in my collection because I can never afford them. And so for that reason, I expanded it to BGS 9.5 rather than expand it to PSA 9. You know what I mean? So I, I, the Jim Mint uh, qualification was more important to me than PSA over BGS or vice versa or whatever. So uh, that's why I made that decision. Uh, I don't know, Zach, only you can answer that question. I mean, guys, guys if you're watching and, uh, and again, it's all going to be in the eye of the beholder. What, what would you do? Zach, Zach's talking about a couple of cards he's got in PSA 10. Give me an example of one. Would you have a plus factor in PSA 10? I'm really wanting to let go of the sticky fingers in PSA 10. However, the 9.5 population, I believe, is 22. So it's like, when am I going to see that in a uh, 9.5? And there's, there actually is one on eBay. But it's no subgrades, so I'm out on it. Just tough. Yeah, and that's not that's that you're not willing to do. Yeah, I, and I don't blame you, right? We got to draw the line somewhere. We got to have some kind of parameters. Uh, so the sticky fingers, the top, there's a tops chrome as well now, but the top sticky fingers pop 113, um, and the PSA tens pop 223. You'll find a 113, Zach. If if you're looking for the, are you talking about the tops or tops chrome? Can you put them on the oh. screen? Jeez, did I really not share again? I'm the worst at that. I am so bad at that. I need to just leave the screen pulled up. That's the tops uh, Chrome yeah, picture, but it's the tops it, on card ladder. Remember they made a mistake? Oh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the 9.5, there's 113 of them, Zach. Uh, yeah, that'll come up. Three of them have sold in the last six months, so it will come back. We know it will come back. We just don't know when. Um Base is a good looking card too. Even that base from 1996 tops is just a good looking card. Man, look at that. 43 bucks for a base 96 tops PS uh, BGS 9.5. That's crazy. The PSA pop is 10X and it's more. It just makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to me. I'm sorry. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um, I don't know, Zach, what do you think? Which way are you leaning? So I just think there's a, a lot better cards that I could buy in a 9.5 mm -hmm. for what I would get for that sticky fingers in the PSA 10, right? I mean, yeah, yeah, you could go buy. I mean, basically the three cards that you just put on the screen add up to, well, they're a little bit more, but yeah, I mean, you could do some damage, man. You could replace that PSA 10 and pick up two, you know, $200, $225 BGS 9.5s. Yeah, you know? I'd trade you that for the legacies. <gasps> what? What? Well, then you're just giving me duplicates on duplicates. That's not helping me any. <laughs> that ain't helping me. Um, and what else? Anything else? Let's talk like, before we before we roll out of here. Uh, what's on the horizon? What's on the radar? Is there any one car that you've been kind of circling around like a shark in the water? Any one? Are you are you close to pulling the trigger on a four figure? Or are you you building a foundation, laying a foundation? Thinking about it, I want to find I want to find the right four figure car. But you see, I'm. I'm I'm stepping up. I was below 100 to like 150. Now I'm getting 250 to 300 area. Yeah. Maybe like legacy, like six, 700 areas next. And then I'll go after a bigger card. Well, um, I've got one pulled on the screen that you need to start, start putting your eyes on. It's a big one. Yeah. I've actually got one ending this Sunday in the auction. I think, I think it's this Sunday. It might've ended last Sunday. I don't know. But I had I just happened to have a 9.5, and then I picked up the PSA 10 for my set, uh, and so my 9.5 was expendable. If I'd have known you were going to jump into it, I would have just held it and waited and held, just hold it for you as long as you need, um, and then sold it to you. Only a pop 105, and the PSA 10 is only a pop 97. You're talking about 200 gem mint copies of probably his most, I would say probably his most recognizable insert in the world. I think. Yeah. You know. It's yeah. a good-looking card. It is. Another card that's very difficult to take pictures of. It's just very difficult, you know. Uh, here, let's see if we can see if we can prove that. What what kind of upset me is um, so like we said, I like buying the cards off PWCC, especially like the weekly stuff. Yeah. Um, and the way that I do it is I go into search and I literally type in Michael Jordan BGS 9.5 and then enter, and I favorite everything that I like, but for some reason. I believe this may be an error. I may have only selected like one week, but there's a three 9.5s for auction this weekend. 
Of this? The, no, 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 no. Of Jordan in general. Three oh, Jordan yeah. No, I did it. I did it. I, I, that's what I was saying. I think the PWCC weekly auctions for Jordan are shrinking. But I think it's, Zach, I think it's people hesitant to sell during Christmas and New Year's. I think yeah. we'll see that balloon back up a little bit in uh, early to mid Jan. Let's let's see what happens in January. I hope so. Yeah, and that's something we can do. Uh, I don't have it pulled up now. Hang on, let me take this off. And make sure it doesn't show my ball. Hang on, we can pull it up, but we can kind of we can go look at it right now. Let's see what's up. I'm not gonna log in. I'm just gonna go to the weekly. Yeah, I got you. Okay, cool. So I've got the weekly pulled up, and let's go to. Um, we go to sorts and fill. I'll just show you guys how I search. I go to status and I go to, um, sorry, weekly auction. We go to this weekly auction because you don't want to see stuff ending next Sunday. And then I sort by highest first. I don't know how you do it, Zach. And then I don't have to do this, but I go down here and I click basketball. You don't really have to because you're searching Michael Jordan, but I don't want to pull up his baseball crap. And then you go here and then you just type in Michael Jordan BGS 9.5 and then just hit boom. Three yeah. cards, Zach. Damn. Now we're talking about base cards that you, yeah. Okay. So, you know, that yeah, that's a base yeah. card you need to keep on your radar for sure. Um, uh, atomic refractor. So you're talking about a, a pretty cool parallel right there. Atomic refractors are pretty badass. Um, and then of course, this is something that you're at some point, you're going to have to take that down for sure. Cause that's one yeah. of, you know, one of two refractors with Jordan front Kobe back that I know of from the 90s. This is probably the most popular of the two that I know of the yeah. East West refractor. It's a really good looking card. It's actually grades really well. So it's not as rare as you would think. But uh, yeah. but you're right, Zach, like that's crazy. And then look, when you change it to PSA 10, it's just not that many uh, in this weekly auction. And I think it's just the holiday season, man. 16. Yeah, that's not normal. Like I'm, I'm used to seeing over 100. Like oh hundreds, you know, sometimes um, just different ones. Um, and this is one that I, uh, I I'm not logged in, or maybe I am logged in. You might see one that I've bid on. Gosh, I don't want to share that. Uh, I'll have to remember that next time. Yeah. So um, anyway, but that's it. So um, are you done? If you're not done pooping by now, I don't know how long you need to sit on that hotel toilet to, to do this. But uh, but y'all go have some fun and uh, and stay safe. How long are you in uh, the great state of Louisiana? How long are you in Baton Rouge? Couple more days. Couple more days. And then you're driving back? Yeah. Dude, you're crazy. <laughs> you're a freaking pilot, man. Hijack a plane, fly back. I don't know. Uh, yeah. No, I might have to get back. over though. Might you need to get back to work and make some of that cheddar so you can go buy some more Jordan stuff and then you can share yeah. it with us. Cool. Yeah. Um, well, that's a wrap. This is episode number three of Jordan Card Collecting. Zach, as always, thanks for joining us. I really think the people are having fun, you know, kind of following your collecting journey and learning along with you. And, uh, and of course, uh, you know, I learn something every time I do this about pops and about the weekly and about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And uh, just the more you talk about it, just the better you get at it. And the more stuff yeah. makes sense and the more educated you get and the better decisions you'll make. But uh, stay patient. And, uh, and we'll touch base in probably seven or eight days and we'll, uh, we'll knock it out and we'll do episode number four. 60, 21, and 10. You got anything to say about that? Well, um, <laughs> Jordan had a 59, 18, and 7 in regulation. Did you know that? Pretty hey, close. I like Jordan. I'm not mad about that stat. Pretty close. Pretty close. <laughs> but, yeah. No, you're right, man. He's uh, he's special, man. Um, it's just that there's too many cards. There's too many, too many cards in 2018. Yeah, yeah. He's printed too many, Zach, uh, you know. <laughs> so – um, anyway, but we'll chat in seven to 10 days. Take care. Y'all have fun. Enjoy your new years and, uh, everybody watching hit the subscribe button. And I never ask you guys to do this, but I'm starting to get more consistent with it. Hit the like button because apparently it helps with my channel. Uh, because I asked people to hit the like button a couple times last week and subscribers went up and I think YouTube shares it more. So apparently the like button matters. I need to get better at that. Cause I never think of that. Zach, do you hit the like button when you watch a video that you like? I don't, I didn't even know it mattered. Like I never did it, but now like I, as a content creator, I empathize with people. So if you like anything we had to say, even if you like only one of us, I, you probably only like Zach, but hit the like button because it does help the channel, helps grow the channel. And, uh, and so I can keep making good content for you guys and keep talking about Jordan cards ad nauseum. Um, as always, thank you guys for watching. Keep collecting, stay positive in the hobby and peace.